Hey there YouTubes. Okay, well I'm hoping by the end of this video you'll be able to figure out which uh, which um, of my two truths and a lie were the two truths and what was the one lie. Just keep on watching. You'll figure it out. I know you will. Secondly, Fate Wolf, I could kick your ass. I've got a cold now. Thank you very much, even though we're geographically pretty far apart. But I'm blaming you anyway. Whatever. <laughs> um, so, today we're going to make chicken soup. We're starting off with, I don't know, six, eight cloves of garlic, depending on the size. Because they've done scientific studies showing that garlic has anti-germ properties to it. And so, theoretically, or my bad, hypothetically, it's the garlic in chicken soup that actually does that actually is part of the healing property of it. Not to mention you're getting fluids in your body and that's all. You're getting fluids to help keep everything thin. Um, you're also getting uh, you're also getting good protein because that will help to rebuild whatever the germs happen to destroy or that your body destroys to get rid of the germs. Oy. And the heat and the steam could probably even help to break up some of the congestion from it. So, we're going to chop this pretty, pretty big. Lots of garlic chopped pretty big. And then we're going to put this into a pot where we have a little bit of pure olive oil already warming. Now, if you can't use pure, pure olive oil, I would suggest just using regular oil, just a little bit, like maybe a tablespoon or so. But the pure olive oil is better because um, it has antioxidants in it, which are really good. And so basically you'll want to let this simmer, get all nice and browned. That'll help to release some of the flavor. And make sure that you are crushing and chopping your garlic because that's what's really releasing all the goodiness that will help you get feel better. And then we have a piece of chicken. If you saw my um, video about how I live cheaply, you'll understand that um, I personally actually take, get my own chicken and I hack it up myself. Get a whole bird, hack it up. This stuff, last night I put salt, pepper, garlic powder, and um, a little bit of paprika on it because that's what my fiance likes and she's going to have some too. Um, ideally you want to peel the skin off this just because the skin gets really nasty unless you like skin in your soup. And ideally for this recipe you'll want to use a piece of chicken that has the bone in. Um, because bones, you can get a lot of good vitamins and stuff out and that will also help get rid of your cold. Um, and frankly what I like to do with the skin is to throw it in a skillet and fry it up. Why not? And yeah, so what else is going on while I'm peeling the skin off this chicken? Well, I went down and I visited the corn. And I visited my folks in the corn and had a delightful time. But on my drive back, I was in the gap period, I was in like one of those gap spaces between where you can't hear um, public radio. So, I happened to flip it on to a conservative, actually extremist, psycho, crazy conservative radio show. And this extremely psycho, crazy, conservative radio person said that Planned Parenthood was created to eliminate black people. No, I'm not actually showing you how I'm doing this chicken on camera because I think you might be grossed out. Um, and saying that most of their funding comes from performing abortions. No, and that uh, the bulk of their job to do is actually to perform abortions. No. Turn you guys a little bit. The bulk of, I mean, yeah, you know what? That is part of it. But you also understand that to get that procedure, there's a mandatory 24 to 48 hour waiting period, at least three rounds of counseling, so the person is well informed. 
beyond this, Planned Parenthood does massive amounts of preventative education and they also offer affordable birth control to people. Um, my ex's roommate, she got her birth control through Planned Parenthood because she probably couldn't afford it on her own. Which kind of makes you scratch your head because my ex's roommate was actually anti-choice. Anyway, I see our garlic is releasing all those yummy flavors and starting to brown up. Looks delicious, don't you agree? So, what we're going to do is we're going to take our chicken, put it in the pot, hear that nice little sizzle, and basically fill it up with water, toss some more salt on it, and boil the shit out of it. Now personally, I don't actually like frothy chicken soup. So what I will do, um, once the chicken is thoroughly cooked, like you poke it with a fork and it comes out um, and there's like no blood in the water after you poke it with a fork, what I do is I then pull the chicken out, take a couple of forks and rip it apart, um, toss the chicken back in, and then boil up some ramen in it. I'll make that toss in some veggies and boil up some ramen in it. But if you happen to have, if you happen to know somebody who's gluten free or you're making this for somebody who's gluten free, all you have to do is put, all you have to do is literally strain off half the broth. Put the broth in a separate pan and they get, and your gluten free person can do whatever they want with it. So, this is what it will look like for, well, quite a while until it comes, until it's completely cooked. You know, it'll probably take anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour, depending on how high you have your water. So you let it cook. Um, you let it cook. You might want to toss in some veggies once your chicken's completely cooked. Toss in your ramen. Cook your ramen. Strain off all the broth. And toss it with a little bit of butter, and then it's really tasty. I will put the recipe down below and some links as to why chicken soup is good for colds, if you didn't already figure that out. And hopefully you now know what my two truths and a lie were. And fate Walt, I hope you get better. Peace out.